Hello, and welcome back to the next Choose Your Own Adventure Gameplay. Today, we have Book 10, The Lost Jewels of the Booty by R.A. Montgomery. Illustrated by... Bookinger. This has 36 possible endings, like Book 5. And, um, yeah. I have this die as well. Like from the Who Killed Hello Zombie gameplay. This one here. Alright, we're already had enough talk. Let's begin. Halfway through your summer vacation, you get an urgent telegram for your cousins Peter and Lucy. Need your help finding the jewels of the booty. Fly to Boston at once. Bring passport. Danger. Be careful. Peter and Lucy. After reading the telegram several times, you're still puzzled. Remember the jewels? Who could forget them? The two diamonds shone like the sun's reflection off a glacier, and the two ruby rubies were like the eyes of a jungle creature at night. Peter's father had brought them from a shopkeeper in Morocco many years ago. The shopkeeper had been nervous about the sale, but also anxious to get rid of the jewels. Two days later, Peter's father had returned to the shop to ask more about the jewels only to find the shop closed. A small sign on the door announced this sad and unfortunate death of the shopkeeper, Mr. Abdul said. That same day, he received a letter at his hotel demanding the return of his jewels. The letter warned him that his life was in danger if he did not return them. Obviously, he ignored the letter, but he always hinted about the strange and mysterious powers the stones held. Peter and Lucy tells you the jewels are lost. What can you do to help your cousins find them? You pack your bags and leave your house in New Orleans and fly to Boston. You glance over your shoulder, nervously searching for followers. Peter and Lucy meet you at the airport. Peter says, There isn't much time. If you agree to help, take the next plane to Paris tomorrow afternoon. From Paris, you'll fly to Morocco. You'll have to hurry. But Peter, you complain, I don't understand what this is all about. You will when you read this letter. Here. Yeah. The jewels of Nabuti are four keys to the hidden wisdom and wealth of the secret African tribe. Those who have the jewels either enjoy health and fame, or they suffer agony beyond belief. The current owners of the jewels must guard against them being lost or stolen. They must wait to hand them over to the appointed messengers of Nabuti. Loss of the jewels could mean death. You are puzzled by the letter. Peter and Lucy try to reassure you, but the truth is that their lives have been threatened if they should continue to search for the jewels. They have asked you to search for the jewels because you are unknown to the thieves. You are re relatively safe, as safe as anyone can be on the trail of the jewels and the booty. If you agree to go on tomorrow's plane for Paris, turn to page 4. If you demand more time, information and extra help, turn to page 7. Alright, let's demand more time, information, and extra help. Page 7. Hey, I can't just hop on another plane. I just don't know enough about what is happening. Peter looks at you and shrugs his shoulders. I don't blame you. Let's go back to my house. You take a long roundabout route to his house to shake off followers. Peter and Lucy talk about the jewels. They know more than they had let on. Over dinner, they tell you that three times in recent years, messages had come demanding their return to the Nabuti tribe. Their father refused to be frightened into returning the jewels. They were not only worth a small fortune, but strangely enough, he believed in the legends about the jewels. He admitted that it might sound funny to the others, but he said that the jewels did have strange and wonderful powers. Then, tragically, their father was killed in a horrible accident. Stepping on to a sailboat from a dock on a perfectly calm day, the boat had suddenly moved. He slipped between the boat and the dock was and was crushed. Before he died, he murmured these words, Protect the jewels at all costs. Go on to page 8. Peter didn't like it one bit, and a note came directing him to deliver the jewels to a rug merchant in Tangiers, a Moroccan town, but then three men broke into the house. 
bound him hand and foot and stole the jewels. Crash! The window is shattered by a shotgun blast. No one is hurt. Um, no one is hurt, but you are all terrified. Then the telephone rings. And when Peter answers it, a deep voice says, Give up now or else. This is just a warning. Click. The phone goes dead. A wind blows in the trees outside the broken window. The three of you stare at each other. If you decide to give up now, turn to page 13. If you decide to go and search at the jewels in the booty, turn to page 12. Alright, let's, let's keep searching for the jewels. Rising from your safe position on the floor, you head for the front door. Um, almost tripping on the shotgun pellets, rattling around on the smooth floor. You make it to the door, but whoever was out there is gone. You are silhouetted in the doorway. Definitely a bad place to be, but nothing happens. Peter, they are dead serious. If you don't get the jewels back, they will kill you and Lucy. I'll help. I'll leave for Paris tomorrow. Peter and Lucy gather around you, slapping you on the back and shaking your hand. You seem to have forgotten the shotgun blast and the telephone call, but then the merriment is broken by the sharp ring of the telephone. Picking up the receiver, you hear a voice say, We weren't kidding. Next time you won't be so lucky. Click. The connection is broken again. If you decide to leave without getting the aid of the police, turn to page 20. If you get in touch with the police, turn to page 21. Let's leave without getting the aid of the police. I don't think we need the police in this matter. They could just cause us more trouble. Let's go it alone, says Lucy. You agree. For the rest of the evening and into, an, into, into early morning, the three of you huddle together and talk. You glance nervously to um, walk toward doors and windows. You are afraid of another attack. Time to go, Hank. Time to go now. Hurry. We'll get you to the airport and meet you later when you want us. Driving in the early morning traffic, it is hard to tell whether or not you are being followed. You think you see a light-colored compact car darting in and out of the traffic flow in an attempt to follow you, but you can't be sure. When you get to the checking counter for the international flight to Paris, three people stand by the counter watching the door. You slip by them and go to another airline. What do you do now? If you continue on the flight to Paris, turn to page 34. If you escape these three people by booking a flight to Spain instead of France, turn to page 36. Well, let's uh, go to Spain instead of France. A loudspeaker blares up the message. Air, Air Iberia is in its final boarding phase. All passengers proceed to gate 14. You make up your mind to go. With the money Peter and Lucy gave you, you buy a ticket and proceed to gate 14. Now and again, you glance over your shoulder to watch the people at the Air France counter. Obviously, they don't know you, or they would have followed you. Off to Spain. Once there, you can either fly up to Paris to begin the search... Or you can fly to Morocco and search for the rug merchant that, that Peter and Lucy told you about. If you go up to Paris according to Peter and Lucy's plan, turn to page 49. If you decide to skip Paris and head directly from Morocco, turn to page 51. Let's go to Paris. The plane to Paris is hijacked exactly 11 minutes after it takes off. Five people wearing masks and waving pistols announce that they are taking the plane to China. The captain attempts to calm everyone down by assuring you that everyone will be done according to the hijacker's demands. But the plane does not have enough fuel for such a long trip and the pilot is forced to land in Greece at the Athens airport. After landing, the plane is surrounded by police and military vehicles. The hijacker, the hijackers call for everyone to listen to them. We need a hostage. If someone volunteers to come with us, we will let the others go. We promise not to harm the hostage. We will let 
the hostage go after we get to China? Are there any volunteers? If you volunteer to be a hostage, turn to page 70. If you remain quiet, turn to page 71. Let's volunteer. Your legs feel rubbery as you walk down the stairs from the plane. The sun reflecting on the runway hurts your eyes. How crazy can you be? What purpose is there in volunteering to be a hostage? But then hunting for the jewels of the booty is dangerous too. One way or another, your life is filled with adventure. Finally, you are seated in a fast-moving touring car and driven to the opposite end of the runway. Your captors, your captors are silent. The two women are firm and businesslike. The man reeks of garlic. You are led to another plane. Just as you are getting near the steps up to the plane, the Greek army captain shouts, Run for it! We've got you covered! If you run for it, turn to page 95. If you keep on going up the steps of the plane, turn to page 93. Let's keep going up the steps. It is too dangerous to attempt an escape. You follow the other passengers onto the plane, wishing all the while that you were going back home. The plane takes off, heading for China. The, lead, the leader, a beautiful brunette with intense green eyes, sit down, sits down next to you. Leaning forward, she whispers, I can read minds. It is a gift. I know that you are searching for the jewels of the booty. You must give up the search. The jewels will destroy those who seek them. You stare at the woman, wondering if she is mad. Does she really want to help you, or is she your enemy? Terrified, you shrink down into your chair and close your eyes you drift into a nightmare in which the leader's eyes turn to gorgeous but deadly green snakes that slither around your throat choking you you gasp for breath as the pine hurdles through the air to china the end well that was a bad ending obviously we get choked by snakes let's see what would have happened if we ran for it hmm I wonder. Duck, sprint, crouch low, bullets whip over your head. Then you are safe behind a Greek army jeep. The hijackers are in a plane, but the army squad shoot out the tires. It's all over for them. How about you? Should you stay in Greek? Should you stay in Greece for a rest? If so, turn to page one hundred and one. Should you go back home? If so, turn to page one hundred two. Let's stay in Greece. Greece is beautiful. Clouds sail above the Acropolis. The sea is golden in the afternoon sun. You give up this frantic chase for the fabled jewels. You even decide to take a job in Athens, working for the English language new paper called the Amphora. The end. Uh, I guess that was pretty good. See if what would happen if we had gone back home. Going back home means giving up. You know that, but what can you really do? One person alone trying to find the jewels of the booty is impossible. With a feeling of regret, you fly to Boston and taxi out to where you and Peter and Lucy met to discuss the problem. But when you arrive at their home, they are not there. A note on the kitchen table sends you to an address in downtown Boston. If you are tired of the whole chase, ignore the note and stop here. We are not going to do that. That would count as an ending. However, the other choice is, if you are still interested, go to the address by turning to page 116. So we will do that. The address turns out to be the Museum of Fine Arts. A large sign out front announces the exhibit of the fabled Jewels and the Booty, a recent loan to the museum by an anonymous group. You notice four or five children outside the museum wearing the booty t-shirts. They are listening to a cassette player and doing a strange dance. The music plays, Doing the Booty, a new hit tune, The End. That was a pretty good ending as well. Give me a second. So earlier in this video, 
They chose to go to Spain instead of France. Uh, uh, where do we go? We're on page 20, alright? So, um, so, here. So, we will, like, um, go into Spain instead of France. So, let's see what happened when we, um, continued on to fight the Paris. Running the risk of going on the Paris flight doesn't work out. The three men surround you, and one of them jabs a needle with a knockout drug into your arm. When you wake up, you're in a cabin deep in the forested area surrounded by low hills. Your hands and feet are securely bound. You're cold and stiff and hungry. A tarantula creeps out of the pile and leaves and heads for you. There is nothing you can do. It's all over. The end. That was bad, bro. Bad. Back, the, back at the beginning, we chose to um, demand more time, information, and extra help. And there... That happened, remember? And then we chose to... Um, keep going in the search of the lost jewels and the booty, but all that happened if we gave up. You look at Peter and Lucy for a long time, then as if someone else was speaking for you, you tell them, I can't do it. We'll all get killed. Give up. Get the police. Let them handle it. Silence. Peter and Lucy both look away. Finally, Peter speaks. But you've got to help us. You're our only hope. Okay, but it's too big for us. Wait a minute. Maybe I can get Beach Muswell to help. Beach is an adventurer, a private detective, and a good person to have around an emergency. If you get in touch with Muswell and he agrees to go, turn to page 22. If Muswell is nowhere to be found, turn to page 23. Muswell, oh, we can't find him. Beach Muswell is reportedly climbing in the Hindu Kush Mountains with an international team of alpinists. There is no way to reach him. Time is running out. You had better be on your way to Paris. Peter and Lucy rush you to the airport. Go back to page four. So yeah, that was like, yeah, page four. All right. Go to Paris, page four. Fasten your seat belts. Put your seat belts in an upright position. Extinguish all smoking materials. Flight 231 for Paris is now ready for takeoff. The steward explains about emergency procedures, but you listen with only half an ear. Then there is the roar of the jet engines as the plane rushes down the runway and leaps into the air. Turning away from the small pine window, you notice that the person sitting next to you is doodling on a pad. Long, narrow fingers. Grasp the gold pen tightly. They are a bloodless white. What is creepier still is that they have no nails. You sneak a closer look at his face and see eyes that reflect no light. Thin mouth showing no lines at the corners and a closely shaven jaw. A mustache hides a scar that runs from the nostril at to this corner of the mouth. You look down and see that the scribbles on the pad are diamond shaped. They seem to spell out the word Nabuti. A shiver of fear races through you. This cannot be a coincidence. This person next to you certainly knows who you are. He too must be looking for the missing jewels. Go on to page six. Fatigue overcomes your fear and you fall into a troubled sleep. When you waken, you are over the English Channel descending towards Paris. Would you care to share a taxi to Paris, my friend? It's the man next to you. You started his words as though a knife were tickling the back of your neck. Why, I, I don't know. Where are you going? It's a pretty lame way to delay your answer, but you need to do some fast thinking. The stranger fixes you with an eerie stare and says, We are searching for the same thing. I need your help, and you need 
mine. If you accept his offer for the cab ride, turn to page 10. If you make excuses and refuse his help, turn to page 11. Let's accept his offer, page 10. A row of taxis meets you at the entrance to the airport. You, you and your storage companion jumps, jump in the one and roll off to the centre of Paris. The ride is fast and dangerous. Your driver doesn't seem to think that there are any rules to the road. Then you are standing on the sidewalk in front of a small cafe. Your companion motions to a waiter in the cafe. One moment, all is ready. The waiter scurries away only to return a minute later with two glasses and a note asking you to, the, to meet a man named Molotowa at the table in the back of the restaurant. He is our contact here in Paris. Listen to what he says, but be careful. Watch the doors and windows our enemies are about. If you take a seat on the left near the door, turn to page 15. If you sit with your back to the wall, turn to page 16. Let's take a seat with my back on the wall. You remember reading somewhere that it is safest if you sit with your back to the wall. That way, no one can sneak up on your on you from behind. The way it hovers over your table for a minute. Taking your order. Then, Molotowa appears, at least you assume that it is Molotowa, and takes a seat next to you. Uh, he is a handsome man of about 25 years of age. There are tribal scars. Two rows of three lines each on his cheeks. The multicolored African shirt fits loosely over his frame. Thank you for agreeing to meet with me. It is good that you came. Perhaps we can recover the lost jewels with each other's help. You nod in general agreement. But who exactly are you? Molotawa looks at you for a moment and then says, I am a prince of the ancient Nabudi tribe. We ruled in a large region of Africa for many, many years before Africa was taken by European countries. We were fair and just. The jewels are a powerful symbol of our leadership. They have magic powers. They can confuse the evil doers and stop the bad. We must have them back to continue our work. If you wish you can meet my father, the king, here in Paris, or you can go now though, to the Ivory Coast where my people are. If you want to meet Molotowa's father, turn to page 28. If you decide to go to the Ivory Coast, turn to page 26. Let's go to the Ivory Coast. The Ivory Coast is a beautiful country in the most tropical region of Africa. Colonized by the French in the 19th century, it is now um, independent and, and relatively healthy in terms of its economy. You soon find yourself in Abidjan, the capital of this West African country. Come with me, my friend. Here in Abidjan, you will be safe. All the people of the Jews of Nabuti, we will be helped whenever we ask for it. Just as you enter the Grand Hotel, a siren shrieks and both of you spin about to see a police car scream around the corner. It's headed um, right for the hotel. Only there's a problem. There is no one in it. It smashes into the hotel lobby and barely misses you and Molotowa. Was this an accident? If you think it was, turn to page 43. If you think this was not an accident, turn to page 42. Let's think that it was an accident. You cross the lobby to the car and open the car door. Pinned to the steering wheel, it is a note with your name on it. It reads, We won't give up. Go back where you belong. There's a sign of two crosses at the bottom. You are not sure just what it means, but you are sure it spells nothing good for you. This was certainly no accident. Suddenly, you're surrounded by police officers who claim that this police car was stolen only minutes before. 
uh, one of them says, the note is addressed to you. You must come with us to that police headquarters. Stealing an official car is serious business. You protest, but they refuse to listen to you. Off you, off you go to see the commissioner of police. Comm commissioner of police. Should you tell them about the lost jewels, or should you pretend that you know nothing? You decide to come clean and tell the whole story. The chief of the police listens politely to your story. He tells you that he too believes in the jewels and the booty, and he, uh, that he will help you to recover them. I want you to meet. Owobesa Saloon, an ivory inn from the northern jungles of the Ivory Coast. You will like this man. The police commission commissioner beckons to one of his aides. Um, you shake hands with Obesa. Obesa offers some suggestions. You can consult a shaman on page 57, or you can try to contact in the booty tribe direct by going to page 60, or you can search the average John by going to page 62. Alright, let's try to contact in the booty tribe. Direct. Page 60. Where should you look for the Nabooty tribe? There isn't any listing in the telephone directory. They are a nomadic tribe that wanders from the northern part of the Ivory Coast to Chad to the edge of the Sahara. An article in the local newspaper catches your eye. The, N the Nabooty tribe was reported heading to the Ward Lake Chad. You add a twin engine light plane and fly to the huge shallow lake just south of the Sahara. Don't swim in this lake! It is filled with parasites that can kill you! Your plane crosses airspace held by a revolutionary guerrilla group. You are forced to land at an unused airstrip near the old French town called Fort Lamy, home of the Foreign Legion. When you land the plane, you are surrounded by people with rifles pointed at you. If you try to take off again, turn to page 82. If you get out of the plane and hold your hand up in the signal of peace, turn to page 83. Let's try to take off again. Um, sorry, I need to get my dice. Here we go. Let's take off. Release the brakes. Kick the rudder pedals hard left. Push the throttles full forward. Bump down the strip. Bullets rip through the thin metal skin of the plane. You make it into the air and dash for the border away from Chad, but your plane runs out of gas and you're forced to land in a desolate, almost desert area. You have very little water, no food, and no little prints to help you. The end. Alright, that was bad, I guess. So taking off was a bad choice. Let's see what would have what happened if we got out of the plane and holded our hand up in a signal of peace. Page 83. You strike a bargain with the leader of this band of cutthroats. They lead you to the Nabuti tribe, camped peacefully on the shores of Lake Chad. The jewels have been returned. The power of peace is flowing in the world. Congratulations on a job well done. The end. That was good. I think we're going to stop the video here because it's been like 28 minutes and I think that's enough recording time. I have the next book with me. It's called Book 11, Mystery of the Maya by Ari Montgomery. And if you want to see who the illustrator is, you'll have to stay tuned for the next video. So with that, I will see you next time in the next Choose Your Own Adventure gameplay. Goodbye.